you know, when, when we ended up uh, deciding to build our battery factory, the Gigafactory in Reno, I think a lot of people felt that we just, uh, you know, up and put all of our equipment in the Mayflower trucks and, you know, shipped everyone off uh, up to Reno. Um, things could really be farther from the truth. Um, the truth of the matter is we have 9,000 employees in the state of California. We have 12,000 employees worldwide. When I started four years ago, we had about 1,400 employees. Most of that growth has occurred here in Fremont and in the East Bay. Um, we've now, we pride ourselves on being a vertically integrated company. The, the facility just next door used to be uh, an, a, a one-stop shop where we had cold rolled aluminum coming in one side of the plant and fully assembled vehicles coming out the other. Um, we've now got well over 5,000 people in there and we've been able to stretch our legs. We, we have a plastic shop, we have a paint shop, we have our final assembly, we have two body and white lines that are, uh, that are, just, uh, that are up and running. But, um, someone alluded to this earlier, uh, the Tesla effect is not just about the jobs that we've created here at this site in, in Fremont. 40% of our supplier base, much like Thermo Fisher, is in the state of California, and much of the, the, many of those suppliers are in the Bay Area, very proximate to our facility. We are, we're not, this is the problem, you, you, puns invariably, you come back to automotive references. Um, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, when NUMI went away, it took 4,500 4, jobs with it from, from Fremont, it took 25,000 jobs away from the Bay Area. Um, we are trying to rebuild that, that supplier base for the automotive sector. Some of it has been taken up by, by the software industry, by advanced manufacturing industries. Um, but what Toyota had here was a just-in-time manufacturing facility, which required proximity for the supplier base to deliver all of the pre-assembled parts uh, to the factory to, for final assembly. That's what we're starting to get back to. That's what you need in order to be a high volume manufacturer. Um, you know, we talk about the university system, we talk about the intellectual capital that, that Silicon Valley has. Um, a lot of that gets pinpointed into a certain demographic uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, the high skilled, uh, you know, high, uh, high wage jobs. It's what we think of Silicon Valley and software engineers and those sorts of things. I will tell you that that's a minority uh, in, in our operations in Fremont. Most of the employees are working you know, one of the two shifts. They're working on the line as product technicians. They don't necessarily have a, a college education, but frankly, those, that's the 25,000 jobs that were, that were lost, that, that haven't been necessarily made up. And it's those people that invariably have an expertise in manufacturing, but haven't necessarily been able to uh, parlay that into positions here until much more recently as the advanced manufacturing sector has taken off. Tesla is just one, one part of this picture and the other manufacturers that are up here are, are certainly part of that movement as well. Um, Fremont has really become a, a, a beacon for, a, for th that sort of employment um, and it's paid dividends in terms of um, in, in terms of having companies locate in additional facilities. We're now no longer just in our main facility at, at the Tesla factory. We have two additional facilities that are coming online, uh, very proximate on Cater Road and 901 Page. Um, it, it's, it's a great story for the city of Fremont, but it's being mimicked elsewhere as well.